We are live on Facebook. Good afternoon. I'm Beth Copeland with Georgia Christian Business Network, and we are putting God back in business. I'm so excited today. It's Wellness Wednesday. It looks a little different to you because the Fantastic Four are not here today. Yet, we have some special, a special treat for you today, Shante Roe Bullock. I'm so excited to have her back on the platform. When I was posted last night, I said, she's back. She's one of those people like yesterday we experienced with Janine Hammond on our Take Charge Tuesday platform that have a voice that just brings peace, I believe. And uh, plus, she has power in the content that she will share today. So we are going to welcome her back. I just want to take a second to remind you all that this is still the year of the double. We believe at Georgia Christian Business Network, we're keep professing, proclaiming, putting it out there that God wants to bring forth double in every aspect of our lives. And I believe through a download of an acronym that we can experience the double in every aspect of our lives. But I believe that we need direction. And the acronym that he gave me, I promise you it is anointed because the way that he uses to define uh, the double helps us to recognize that through these six characteristics that are made up and uh, are not even made up, that are shared through the acronym that I'm about to share with you right now, is an opportunity for us to embrace those characteristics in order that we may experience the double in every aspect of our lives. The D is decidedly disciplined. The O is optimally obedient. The U is uniquely unified. The B is boldly believing. The L is loving, limitlessly loving. And the E is excellently executing. So this is our great opportunity. If we would just explore the opportunities that God has given through that download is where in my life can I experience greater love or a greater discipline, obedience to God, and even the things that he's assigned to me that I could walk into the double. So today we want to continue even in that vein because Shantane, I want to welcome you back because travel and vacationing plays a part of the double. And I love the way you have titled this for today. I want to allow you an opportunity to introduce yourself again. I know some people are familiar with you already, but I want to, for credibility for those that I uh, haven't met you or watching the replay or, or even over on the Facebook side of the house. I want to allow you that space to introduce yourself. Tell us who you are, what you do, and why it's important that we should know. And then just start talking to us about your topic that you'd like to share today, please. Oh, thank you so much for this opportunity, Beth. I'm so excited. I, through the past few weeks, I've been listening to the well, well, uh, the well, uh, Wellness Wednesday, and you know, and just seeing how my topic fits in with the the theme of the month, and it's been amazing because it really truly does. I say, who doesn't want more vacations? And I'm <laughs> <laughs> right. So I'm Shantane Robullock. I am the more vacations lady. But more than that, I wear many hats. I'm a wife, I'm a mom, grandmother, you know, sister, sister friend. Throughout all those journeys, travel is my love language. Through that, I help women enjoy their life and relationships even more. And I help coaches, leaders, entrepreneurs create those transformative experiences around your brand or your business that your community just can't stop talking about. But one thing that I found throughout all of these years, I've been doing this professionally since 2007. People, but 
like I said, travel is my love language. People, even before I became a professional, people were always asking me because they knew if you knew me, you knew me, I was planning to go somewhere. And so people would always be tapping into what I'm learning and what I'm discovering. And I have found that not only is travel just instrumental in growth, in building a, you know, a part of your well-being and be in building a part of who you are in life and how you do life and a really big part of building this world, even more so as I get older, as I am dealing with other people and working and helping other people, I found, you know, what's core to travel even more than that, your health, your well-being, mentally, physically, you know, it's all about relationships. There are six different aspects, I can say, of the wheel that travel can help fit into and I've now brought into more into my business is really a focus on that 360 health and well-being part of that so that I can just combine it. I say I have a business now. I'm not just in travel. I'm in travel wellness. And I help share that with the world because I think together all of us can get out there, explore the world. And Michelle Obama said something that was just so key. She said, it's hard to hate up close. So guys, let's get out into that world. Let's get to know people and let people get to know us. Let's get to know ourselves and make a bigger impact in this world. I mute myself there. I so love what you said. Um, Traveling is healing too, and it's educational as well, because two points, um, you said more travel, and as you followed us on Wellness Wednesday, and that's why we place you here. I mean, we could very well position you as a travel lady over on our Take Charge Tuesday platform as well, but I believe it fits best here. Because I see it as you see it as healing. I love to go. I haven't been in a beach at a beach in over a year. So I feel like I'm malnutrition. You know, I need to, I need a beach. <laughs> and 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 I find myself really thinking of uh, you know, our next vacation. Where am I going? How can I fit it in? Um, uh, and and I know although it's not, I'm not able to go right now. Uh, just time, space, and, and family things that are happening. But it gives me healing to think about it and to plan towards it. So I like that point. And I like the Michelle Obama quote as well. Um, when we experience more of the world and, and, and how we're more alike than different, um, it's, you can't hate it. You become educated and you become in a place of growth. Traveling brings growth. It brings development. You agree? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I did not really realize that until I spoke to my mom. My love of travel came from my mother. I, you know, that's just the thing it was. That's what she did with us. That's how she educated up us growing up in the 60s. She told us that she got us out of the South so that we would know who we are and whose we are and what we could do with this life and wow. not take on other people's opinions of us. And that just really stuck with me because I just thought travel was fun until uh -huh. I learned more about travel is a tool to get you to where you want to be, to help you grow inside and to help others grow. You know, as they get to know us, they, if they choose, can grow and, and you know, develop themselves and get to know, have a bigger vision of us and the world. I love it, love it, love it. And I love what mom did for her children. I think that is beautiful. And the thing that I can, that resonates strongly with me, within me, I told my kids, I told Romy and I told Jess, I told uh, Bianca's husband, as a matter of fact, um, he met Bianca in France, in, in France. Yeah, because he was studying abroad. But I told them when they were younger though, much younger, uh, 10, maybe Romy, Jess, maybe 15, 16, somewhere around there. If you can get your eyes above Lawrenceville, 
that's a whole big world out there. It's huge. And they were focused on things right here, friends right here. Nothing was wrong with local friends. But, you know, when they have challenges, I'd say that's not going to be in your life. You, I'd offer you, you'd probably not even know that person in five years from now. You know, but you've got to get your eyes above Lawrenceville and you, there's there's more. There's nothing wrong. I'm still here in Lawrenceville, my husband and I, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but what I meant is to explore life and all the vast world that God ha has created yes. is we've got to do it because it is definitely uh, an opportunity for you to broaden your insights, broaden your perspective, and hey, enjoy life. Travel is enjoyment. Yeah. That's the truth. That's the truth. He tells us to, you know, enjoy life more abundantly. And that's what we do. You know, my topic is journey to double well-being, you know, playing off of what you said, that acronym. And I love that. I keep that. I actually have it written down so that I can keep reminding myself of that, you know, because that's, it's huge. I'll keep doing double even after you change <laughs> to, it, to something different. But, you know, the journey to double well-being to me is all about, you know, living life more abundantly. And I, I, I say there are three steps to it. And again, I go back to another quote. I love, love, love what Arthur Ashe said. And he said, if you want to start where you are, you want to use what you have, and you want to do what you can. And I love that because it applies to everything in life. Start where you are, use what you have, do what you can. And I use those when I talk to people about you know, tips and strategies to implement travel because you, it's more about, it's not about just picking a destination. It's about a whole lot more than that. And then we can talk about those things, use those strategies, learn what I, you know, learn some of the things that I've learned that I like to share so that you can have that optimal experience before you go, while you're there, and after you come back. It's Oh my goodness, that's so awesome. I, I have much respect for Arthur Ashe in that quote. And as a tennis pro, um, you know, I used to follow him years ago. I don't know, he's probably, is he alive still? Yeah, I don't know. Yes. But he, he, he <clears throat> that quote and, and knowing his journey mm -hmm. is amazing. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, that's a, an amazing quote. Yep. So, so to, to talk about, you know, what I like to say, the journey to well-being, you know, let's start with start where you are. One of the things that I like to encourage people to do, and when I talk to people about travel, about their well-being, about, you know, their journey, is assess the areas that require your attention. When we're taking care of ourselves, there are areas that, you know, the researchers say that we need to really look at. Your physical, your psychological, as you guys talked about, your emotional and your spiritual, your professional and your personal, you, those, those relationships that you also also talked about, you know. So those things are all a part of that self-care wheel. Where is that wheel a little rocky? You know, where is it kind of getting a little flat? Where do we need to do something so that we can be intentional, take our car off autopilot and really be intentional and implement things that we know, you know, assess where we are so that we can, you know, do, make a plan and then implement that plan. Wow, that is so awesome because sometimes it's too lofty what we're trying to do with travel. Mm -hmm. um, we make it hard, we make it difficult. I want to say hello to Larissa, and those that are on the Facebook side of the house, and she said, travel wellness. I love that. And, but sometimes we start too lofty. I remember my dad, he worked, he was a workaholic, but he loved opportunities to celebrate his family. Now, this is something that I grew up doing, and it was uncommon 
when I grew up, because I'm going to date myself. I'm going to be transparent. I'm 64, closer to 65 now. <laughs> I'm leaving my 64 soon, but years old. And my dad, when I grew up, he was a he was successful uh, entrepreneur, but he didn't believe in travel and he thought it was a waste of money. But one thing he did believe in is going to fine dining and restaurants. And so we ate at some of the most prestigious places. I mean, we were at Pity Pat's Porch when I was 10 and 12 years old, you know, eating. As, and that was a lot of us, too. I mean, you had seven of us. OK, but those are things that he did. He invested in. And that gives you exposure outside of what's your standard and common zone. But I will never forget the time at Lake Lanier. It's so funny that Guy Golf and Girls is going to be at Lake Lanier this year. My first outing that I recall that my dad just packed us up and um, took us out to the lake to go fishing at Lake Lanier. And th that to me, it's just a change of atmosphere. It's where it's total. So when you say start where you are, I like that. Now, We've flown out of the country numerous times, you know, um, been to Hawaii three times and looking for my fourth real soon. One day y'all going to see a picture. I'm going to be in the beach in Hawaii <laughs> when I can figure my time out. But what I'm saying is my humble beginning. Start somewhere. He started somewhere and that's what he did. You know, just get outside of what's comforting. I was looking for the picture that I normally see in the background, but you changed rooms on me today no, because I just it, <laughs> oh, you just reversed it. Okay, but that picture is a star. Mm -hmm. if, if I mean, really, for some people, it might be the place to start is to buy a picture or a magazine on travel. You know, I, I don't know, but I just wanted to throw that out because sometimes people say, I can't afford is the first thing that comes up about travel. So I don't, don't let me throw you off course of what you're trying to do, but that just came in my spirit. <laughs> well, then that goes right into my next step. You know, Arthur Ash said, use what you have. <laughs> so right. when you That's use right. what you have, one of the things we do have, we have, well, three things that we do have, we have connections. We have resources, and most of all, we have the desire. So it's uh -huh. you know, it's, it's about, like I said, it's a bigger, it's much bigger than travel. It's about your well being. It's about yeah. what you have and and what feels good to you. You know what is luxurious to us may be totally different. I know I have, you know, some people that I really know that love camping, and they can take their camper and get out into the woods and do, you know, that does, that's not as expensive as hopping on a plane and going somewhere, but that you still get those same benefits. You still get that same experience, moving out, learning, you know, team building. If you take your family, that's definite team building, learning how to do things together. There's all those aspects that we get from a travel experience, whether it's with your family, with your friends, with your, you know, your, your community, if you're a business person or an entrepreneur, you can pull those in and create those experiences, whether it's, you know, 10 miles from the house, or if you're going thousands of miles on a plane, you still have that. Use what you have and you have connections. You know me, that's at least one connection that you have that can help get you many ideas. Awesome. Awesome. But that's it. Who do you know? Where do you know them? Where do they live? What are the opportunities? And I think sometimes it's expanding our mind beyond. Uh, if, if I really think about it, you know, I'm just thinking of a couple of people that I have friends and connections in Florida, Pennsylvania, you know, uh, branching out. And sometimes we have a tendency to have to depend on someone to go with me but you've got people in places that you could go to that you could connect to is what you're saying what I'm hearing from what you're saying yes, that is, that so when you get there just go when you get there connect with them and I I, I can almost assure you they're going to be so happy that you want to come visit that opportunity may even provide housing for you you know <laughs> 
<laughs> so, you know? so that is definitely a part of what I'm saying. You know, you have different connections, you have resources, and you have the desire. When you have that desire, you can make with those other two things, you can make all of it. You can make it this experience happen in your life. You can take this it, up your up your well up your game, you know, up your well-being, your level of well-being by incorporating travel and looking at it in a 360 by being healthy, looking at your health on a 360 wheel before, during, and after you travel. I always like to say success has a timing and a rhythm. And right now, now might not be your time, but as you said, it's a psychological fact that if you're planning something, it already helps you psychologically. It helps you in mentally and get, getting ready and knowing it. Anticipation is a real thing. You know, I love what you just said. Success has a timing and a rhythm. And sometimes people, and I just want to park here for a minute because I'm going to ask you to go a little deeper with that one because people think, well, I'm not feeling very successful right now. You know, things are, you know, just not panning out for me or I feel like everything, uh, opportunity, um, that comes my way that I'm not feeling successful in it. What we have to remember is what you just said. Success has timing and rhythm and where you are today. I'm going to let you interpret it. Okay. Yes, and then I'll say what I was about to say. Yeah, definitely. Uh -huh. Because, you know, be, keep moving, continue to move, continue to operate in your glory, continue to operate in your passions and, and take take those resources and those connections and build on what you have is a key part of success. You cannot attain success just sitting still and waiting for it to come. You know, it does have a timing. It does have a rhythm. It does have a continuation of the things that you're doing so that you can really attain what God has for us. And I have to remind myself of that, you know, that, that is uh -huh. always something that we must keep in mind is that keep moving, keep doing, keep learning, keep growing, keep adding in, keep changing, you know, keep, keep growing so that you can attain what God has for you. I agree wholeheartedly. I'm going to even say, shake it up a little bit. If we get too caught up in routine and, 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 and travel within itself leaves a whole big definition you know um when we say travel there are road trips there are staycations uh you know there are you know travel to i can go across town and spend the night with i live in gwinnett and bianca and romy um my my kids live over in Cobb, and going away to spend a weekend with them that is a that's shaking up that routine you know of the status quo or doing or getting you outside of uh, feeling as if I'm not successful right now. Maybe park it yep. and refresh yourself, yep. you know, to go visit the grandbaby, you know, or something that is going, like you said, you told me, I said, where have you been? I got to know, you know, <laughs> and Myrtle Beach, right? And I haven't been to Myrtle Beach in a while, but sometimes it just refreshes me and encourages me and empowers me through hearing somebody else's story mm -hmm. and where they've been recently. And it will definitely inspire me to, I got to date that beach, you know, or, or something. I got to do something differently. I'm being I invited her mom's in town in the country and invited me for lunch last Friday and or one day last week was it Friday or Thursday I don't even I can't even remember but I parked did I have have things on my plate I parked what I was doing and I committed to the date I had to rearrange a couple of things because it's GGG season but I went to see my friend Jen and to spend time with Bianca and the baby as well but what I'm saying is Work's going to be there. It's going to be there. And when we learn to plan purposefully for travel, 
are doing it differently, are allowing our schedule to carry some R and R. I think we are better, don't you? Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. You remind me of a, a of a activity that I read about that I thought was just absolutely amazing, and I wanted to incorporate it. A lot of people, you know, every every year, either at the end of the year or the beginning of the year, you hear this, you know, vision board, vision board, vision boards. There, I heard this idea of a self-care vision board and it fit right in with what I'm talking about you know we have those six spokes of the wheel you know you're, you're psychological and you're mental and emotional and it and you assess where you're looking at and then what can you do you know what can you do about it because one of the things that I, I used to talk about is have a list you know things like, like you said I don't have time to do something big but what's something small I can do? If I know I have an oh, extra hour and an hour is coming up, what can I do in an hour that feels good, that self-care, that could feel like is something that I could feel good with when I accomplish that or something in a weekend or a week or a month, you know? And so to me, that self-care vision board was such a great idea that you could really put ideas on it and keep it so that you remind yourself you, you'll never have a, oh, I have an hour and I don't know what to do. And then you have an, and then you look back and go, man, I could have done. Here's a reminder right here. So do a self-care vision board. Think about those different areas. You know, I can send you something that, you know, that, that helps you remind you of those different areas and just plan, as you said, plan for those moments so that you can always be taking care of yourself. Self-care is the core of well-being. Travel, that's a tool. But what we're talking about is well-being, and we really, really, truly want to focus and be, be focused on that, you know, be a- absolutely intentional. I so appreciate that, how you blended in with what we've been uh, tracking. You've been tracking with us <laughs> at Wellness Wednesday. You like the Fantastic Four? Isn't yes, awesome? indeed. <laughs> yeah, Bianca named that. That is amazing. Mm-hmm. And I I tell the girls all the time that we're nowhere near aware of how many people actually watch our videos on the replay. Some are currently like today over on the Facebook side of the house uh, streaming with us live today. Some join us on the platform, but so many others, because we can see the stats of how many and how long are on for some might engage for two or three seconds, but there are numerous that stay connected and watch all the way through on a replay. I never forget when I learned that Lee Gant, uh, one of our GCB and corporate sponsors, if she gets behind on Wellness Wednesday, she just binge watch, she said. And that's how well this program is beneficial to so many people. And when you said, Justine, what you said, you know, travel is one thing, but what we're talking about is well-being. And I don't know if you have a spin the wheel thing uh, that you can share and maybe put it over on the Facebook side of the house. So I would love for you to do that and post that because you're so right. Because as you were talking about that, this is something that even though it's hot right now and I've been working for home. Uh, for a purpose right now. I'm going to get back to my co-working spot as soon as possible. But uh, for right now, I'm supposed to be here. Do you know what I do sometimes? It's just go sit on my porch. And Mm -hmm. if it's a call that I can take, sometimes I prayer call on Monday mornings. I take it on the porch or the uh, the back deck or something like that. Uh, The opportunity to just sit out there and be amongst nature and in one of my rocking chairs, it's change of scenery. It's great opportunity for me to feel refreshed. And I, it makes me get up because I'm that type that could sit here and work all day long. And I have to, and, and it used to be grudge having to go to the bathroom. You know, <laughs> I, I used to be there. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. I enjoy what I do. I have a passion for what I do. But what you're talking about is, is it, it's about my health and my wellness. Mm-hmm. And it's not good to be that way. Uh, anybody thinks that it's wonderful to, to proclaim, you know, I was up at dawn and went to bed 
it past midnight. Um, mm -mm. That's where Beth Copeland used to live. That's not healthy for you. I've got grandbabies, you know. <laughs> I mean, I got children too, but I mean. Yep, <laughs> I know what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I'm on. I want to. I want to work with God. You know, he he doesn't he doesn't require that out of us. You know, he 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 wants us to have what you said that word. I said, oh my God, there's that word again, abundance. Mm -hmm. We talked about it on Take Charge Tuesday yesterday. Yes. Abundance. Yes. Why yes. did he say it? Why did he give us power to get wealth? What what, what are we supposed to be right? <laughs> what, right. And, and 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 I'm not saying just on us. We blessed and sow into the kingdom and mm -hmm. and give to others. But then he said that if we delight ourselves in him, that he would give us the desires of our heart. And he wants us to splurge on us sometimes too. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And you can't you can't give from an empty cup. So you know you have to fill yourself. Girl, come on, <laughs> come on, come on. Yeah, this is good. What <laughs> else you have for us, Shantae? Well, you know, then we can start talking about you know, let's filling in those, fill in that vision board. You know, brainstorm your self care activities collect you know those positive images and, I, and I'm a big one for you know I've got the vision and I don't quite get it to paper yet so co even collecting those images in your mind maybe you're not the one who wants to go and create or something physical but start collecting those images in your mind of the things that you want to do the places you want to go the people you want to do it with you know all those things that make you feel good about your life you know I say I help women enjoy their life and relationships more. Travel's a part of that, but the big part of that is the relationships you're building, the memories you're creating, you know, the things, the, 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 I can think of so many memories I have of my mom and my dad. They're gone now, but when I think about, I can look at TV and see certain things and go, we were there and hear the stories, you know, create those stories around your life so that one day when you're sitting on the back porch in the chair and that's where you're going to be, you can you can share those stories with others so that people can understand you and live your life with you and understand where you're going, where your thought processes are, what you're sharing and imparting into them and build that vision. You can build it on a board, but build that vision. Oh, man, because the board is just providing you the direction is is forcing you enabling you to be able to dream and to want to have a story to pass down to your children and your, your grandchildren and to people that you're engaged with. And I could hear such affection for the time that you had with your parents as you view back those opportunities. And so I said that to say this, the memories, like I shared about my dad, at Lake Lanier, we have the pictures to prove it. Take pictures, take yes. pictures, do take <laughs> pictures. You don't have to post them all. I'm yes. behind from posting personal things from way back in February, but I have the pictures and we post them within our group as a family sometimes. And sometimes when I catch up, I'm gonna share some of them on Facebook, not to brag, but to encourage other people that you know, that there's a human side to me too, other than just work, but uh, but the opportunity to make a memory, make a memory, you know? Um, I think one thing that I'd lend here is to maybe stop concentrating on what I can't do. You said it in, in your saying, uh, I can, um, and I think it's part of Arthur Ashe's um, quote, do what you can. Do what you can. And, and if we would more lean more to what can I do rather than what I can't do is the opportunity. And I'm going to take this moment right here and plug it for God golfing girls, not because I intended it to, intended to, but God just put it in my spirit. Maybe you can't afford to attend the entire weekend, but 
that Friday night at God Golf and Girls, our eighth annual at Lake Lanier, is an outing for women to dress up in your all white and come have some fun with us. Get outside of our comfort zone. It's a $125 investment and it's money well spent. And you'll understand that when you get there. But the opportunity is splurge on yourself. You know, maybe you don't have to get your uh, petty and many, get one or the other and, and spend some of that money and come out and fellowship, like you said, about relationships with other women. We've got to learn how to do it differently, you know, and really splurge on yourself sometime within reason and with discipline, okay, because you've got to be operating discipline. That's where all this whole thing starts. But there are opportunities that you can take care of you first too. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, like you said, that third statement is do what you can. And, you know, what strategies can you devise? Can you network, learn, talk to other people about and find those strategies? I have a webinar that's coming up ooh, August 10th, and it talks about strategies to put your plan into action. You know, because I, I said you can always better your best. And how do you do that? You know, better your best. Better your best. <laughs> Love because that. Even when we're well, we could be better, you know, and so schedule the actions that implement your self-care, you know, create a schedule. There's a rhythm to success. So create a schedule and think about those things that you could implement into your regular schedule so that we don't just sit in one spot and, and work all the time, that we find some little moments that we can actually take care of ourselves, as you said, and, and like the Friday night, you know, what are those times that we could schedule ahead that we could put th things in there? People, you know, they'll talk to me. I've got a, I'm old school. So I have a planner and the planner has this year and next year. And I'm already filling in spots yeah. in next year so that I know really what I'm doing. <laughs> so I, know, I know some things that I want to do. And so, and you commit to those things because once I say, if, if it ain't written, it ain't, it's not happening. So write it down. Commit it to yourself that you will perform these things, that you will do these things, because if we don't believe we are worthy, who will? You are worthy. You are And worthy. That's, that is key. I am worthy. And I think sometimes we try to live our lives through other people's, their photos, and sometimes it's encouraging and sometimes it's discouraging you know, that you're soaking up with someone else, make your own memory. I like what you said about the planner, because just this week, I went, reached out to, you know, some of my family to say, let's do this. Let's date it. This is what we're going to do. And I'm going to take it a step further. I almost took it a step further that day. But I, since this call, I'm taking it a step further. We're going to do this and we're going we're gonna to put our money where our mouth is, okay? And because we always say the Lord willing. And if he, if he comes into play and says, mm, I'm going to interrupt this for whatever reason, not an issue. But he'll also make provisions for the interruption as well. Because sometimes we have a tendency to withhold doing things and, well, how is this going to turn out? Or how is that going to turn out? And God didn't ask you. God likes planning. Okay. <laughs> he said decency and in order. And so what you're saying to us is to create that space and that opportunity where we can say, I picked this date. You know, it's just like the date of God, golf, and girls. It doesn't work for some people because they already had something committed. And you use that word committed. We have got to understand what that word means. When I make a commitment that my word is my bond, okay? It don't matter what comes, what may, something better, the greater opportunity, my commitment has been made and that must not have been meant for me to be able to do that. I understand that. But there are those of us that we don't know how to make a commitment. Sometimes even to ourselves, we'll, we'll just, oh, well, I'll, I'll try. When I start hearing, I'll try, 
I know that's not a commitment. That's more than likely not going to happen because your heart's not in it. Those things that we commit to, we endeavor to do them with the grace of God. We endeavor to do those things and to make them happen. And I believe that when we honor our commitments, God infuses even more opportunities for us to explore and do different things. But commitment is so important. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I'm, I'm reminded I was working with a coach. She's a business coach and a life coach. Hey, Karen. And she and she had, you know, I always, when I work with people, I say, let's plan out, you know, let's plan for next year. And it's like, well, people may not be able to, let's, let's pick a date. Let's plan. Let's commit to that. Well, we committed to this. We had, she had a group going and what happened? It got interrupted. Hurricane interrupted. She was doing a, 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 a retreat cruise hurricane oh, interrupted. Wow. so people were backing out you know the, the matter of fact even the actual date of sailing changed but you know when i talked to the people who did go because the date of sailing changed it became you know safe time to travel they still left and when i hear what happened with that group and how transformed her the her clients were it's like, you know, it to commit and God takes care of the rest. You know, it Yes, it, yes. We planned it That's, way out. But <laughs> January we chose these days. Mm -hmm. And we 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 chose the dates and God has made the provisions. He's protected the dates. And we have over 70 women that are going to be there with us throughout the weekend, God willing. I mean, when I tell you God has a plan and we're part of it, what we put before God is the opportunity for God to bless, to protect, uh, to, to show up on our behalf. If we prayed over it, you believe God for it, go ahead, take a, take a, take a leap of faith. Yes. And allow God to prove himself strong. Ask him to protect it and bathe it in prayer is what I want to say to you Absolutely. for sure. Bathe it in prayer, you know? Absolutely. And, sh and share the plan. You know, I say if, if it's just in your mind, then it might not happen. But when you when you share that plan, when you work with someone else to help bring it together, and you know you have the resources, you have the connections, work with somebody, share that plan, get that plan out into the world, and that's when it blossoms. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm telling you, when I look at uh, when I look at the opportunity to um, share with people about God golfing girls. The opportunity for me is that um, dream about what you want. And this year's event is spectacular, is more different than any other that we've had today, you know? And so I'm just so excited about what God wants to do through what we're even sharing today, you know? I know it'll be fabulous. Oh, I know it. I'm I'm excited about that. Well, Beth, this has been such an exciting and such a blessing to talk with you about this. I I absolutely love what I do. I love what the impact that it has on people in the world. And I just I appreciate the opportunity to bring this to people and and help get that that encouragement and that. Uh, those strategies out so that people can really bring this into their spirit and implement it in their life. Oh, I love it. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, Beth, you're muted. Beth, you're muted. Okay, how about that? Okay, here I am. Okay, I said I'm excited about what God is doing through you 
in ministry. Did you hear that? Yeah. In ministry. It's all ministry, what God is doing right now. And I'm trusting him that people start to see that the importance of uh, travel and what you're doing as more of a self-care opportunity, you know, and not see it as, oh, it's just, you know, frivolous spending or something like that, you know? Exactly, exactly. There's a, there's a whole world of well-being just waiting for us. Travel is a tool. I have other tools, but that, you know, the, the goal is the well-being. For definite, for definite. Well, I want to thank you for joining our show today. Uh, God is just connecting people. What I want to say to people, explore opportunities. We met on online, Shantane, and I believe as I prayed before coming on the show that God has a way of connecting those people that he's assigned to you. And one of the things that we talk about in that acronym that you and I both love, because it was a download from God, is being uniquely unified. And I want to encourage people as we close, I'm going to talk about a couple of things that are upcoming, but I want to encourage people to make certain that they connect with, look and seek opportunities to connect and ask God who's assigned to you, because that person is going to make a difference in your life. Um, but we have a couple of things upcoming that I want to share, Shantae, and then I'm going to give you an opportunity in just a second to give us some words to grow on as we close the show today. Okay. Um, thanks again, Bianca, for supporting us today. Um, I'm trying to get to our chat and I lost it when I changed, but I can do this. Okay. We have upcoming on uh, God golfing girls. There's still an opportunity for you to be able to support us by attending our Friday night, uh, all white party women. I'm telling you, this is going to be spectacular occasion. The event, um, location within the venue is just going to be soothing within itself. I'm going to text you a picture of it, uh, Shantae. You'd enjoy that. And you'll understand why it is an purposefully for an all-white party. Uh, the opportunity, otherwise, if you want to still uh, register for the weekend until this Friday, if you'd like to stay overnight with us, we'd love to try to get you registered. You have not because you asked not. Let us know how we can assist you in that regard as well. We have other opportunities next week. Take Charge Tuesday, Chris Castro, the double, she says double, a biblical he Hebraic perspective, uh, Brick perspective. And on Wellness Wednesday next week, new series for our August, The Power of Transforming Our Mind, Part 1, Transforms Our Character. Ooh, that's going to be good with the Fantastic Four. Uh, looking forward to tomorrow night. Thank you so much, Bianca. If you are local to the Atlanta area, I want to invite you to a free event at Cornerstone Co-working tomorrow night, Health and Living Party. And it's going to be a party. It's free for you to attend. We've got some good refreshments coming your way, but the opportunity is healthy living. And it's going to focus on sharing with you some information that is vital to your living your best life like we've talked about today and having the health to be able to do it. We're going to talk about some Juice Plus products, some things that I've found that have been beneficial to myself and my husband. And so I would like to invite you out. Uh, Bianca will post the opportunity, the flyer, and then you can use the QR, QR code to register. Also, visit our website, gcbnetwork.com. We're putting God back in business, and we need your help. So please join us 
uh, go to our website, look for opportunities for the upcoming events that I just shared with you. But also, while you're out there, look for an opportunity to join us as a member or even a sponsor. We need your help as we put God back in business. We continually are saying and stating we're like Nehemiah. We're doing a great work and we won't come down. Shantae, it's been awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It has, it has. And I see you have so much going on. As one thing that I know is that your well being is the key to unlock your absolute best life. I see you're doing that on more than one level. You know, we, we have tools together. We have the resources, we have the connections, and we have the tools to help you live your best life. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I want to thank you, although you're in Alabama, you're a member of Georgia Christian Business Network. And we want to acknowledge that. We value you. We're excited about the work that you do. And thank you for helping us to put God back in business. God has a plan and we are a part of it. Thank you again for joining us, Bianca. Thank you for your support. For Larissa and those that are on the Facebook side of the house, we sincerely appreciate your support today. God bless you. Enjoy. And until the next time, remember God has a plan. You are a part of it. Bye-bye now.